Even those in the limelight like to get up to some mischief sometimes. How do you think Drake did hosting the ESPYs last night? I don't like Drake. I think he's an actor. He's not a real rapper. I agree, 100%. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 celebrity pranks. <laughs> for this list, we're taking a look at pranks played by celebrities. They can be played on anyone, friends, the public, fellow celebrities, you name it. With that said, we're discounting anything from television shows like Punked because, well, pranking was the point of that show. The Secret Service is Wait. inside. I don't have the keys. This isn't my car. Honey, the honey, calm down. Oh, she's pregnant. Number 10, Macy Williams pranks Game of Thrones fans. Game of Thrones' Arya Stark is ruthless and wants her enemies dead. Macy Williams is also ruthless, only she plies her trade in the pranking department. You want this one? This is you. No, I'm Lorraine. <laughs> what, you think I'm, I'm this? For this joke, which was done for Nylon Magazine, she pretends to be a store clerk at a hobby shop giving away free Game of Thrones merchandise. I know who you are. Oh. I was thinking that I recognized you. Where do I know you from? Nowhere. Have you been to England? Nope. Tinder? Nope. Without a disguise, avid fans quickly realize who she really is, but Williams is so committed to the bit that she never breaks character and starts to make them think otherwise. Here we have the mother of dragons and a dragon breathe like a dragon. She tortures a stream of fans, making them act out scenes from the show or pretend to be dragons in order to earn their prizes. It's silly, foolish, and Williams clearly has so much fun with it. <laughs> perfect! It's perfect! This is incredible. Number nine, Rihanna pranks Jimmy Kimmel. Hey, that is your real address, and we posted them all over town today. Kimmel may be the late night king of pranks, but this time it's Rihanna who pulls a fast one on the funny man. I'm right. on the couch, let's get, let's get him. Pranked. Yeah, well you did. In one of her finest performances, Rihanna sneaks into Kimmel's bedroom at one in the morning, and with the help of his talk show crew, performs a live concert. Breaking the silence, Rihanna bursts into a rendition of her hit song, Bitch Better Have My Money, complete with a light show and confetti. She tortures Kimmel, hitting him with pillows and flashing lights inches from his face, dragging him from his slumber. Kimmel's confused reaction is fantastic, as he takes it like a sport, but not before letting off an expletive or two. <laughs> Number 8, Pitt vs. Clooney Prank War. We're like two nuclear superpowers. At this point, we shouldn't launch because we'll just annihilate each other. This is one battle of two diabolical and, dare I say, very handsome minds. Brad Pitt and George Clooney are both notorious for their pranks. Why? Um, man, I, I, I need a psychologist to tell me why. <laughs> but they reserve their best for each other. Clooney has placed a few innocent bumper stickers on Pitt's car with things that read like, I'm gay and I vote, and small penis on board. He's also revealed that he had stationery made with Brad Pitt's name on it and sent fake letters to Meryl Streep. And I sent it to her with a note from Brad that said, you know, I hear you're going to be doing the Iron Lady soon. <laughs> this guy helped me with my dialect in Troy or something. Like that. <laughs> you know, here, I thought maybe this would help. And I sent it to Meryl and, you know, she's very confused. <laughs> Pitt, meanwhile, has taken out full ads for Clooney boasting about being the sexiest man alive and once tricked Italian film crews into calling Clooney Mr. Ocean and avoiding eye contact with him. These are just a few things in this ongoing war that we really hope never ends. Brad got me pretty bad on one where he, you know, I think he, he was doing Letterman and Letterman asked him when he and Andrew were going to get married and he said when you know, when George can legally marry in California. You know? <laughs> Number seven, Bill Hader pranks school. Human DVRs. Oh. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Stefan. What are human DVRs? <laughs> it's that thing where a midget sits on your TV and tells you what happened on Scandal. A great comedian of the new generation, Bill Hader may have taken his best role when he became Mike the Firefighter to prank a New York high school. Red! <laughs> Come on! Donning a fake mustache, aviator glasses, and a full firefighter's jumpsuit, Hater spoke in classrooms and at an assembly, providing horrible safety tips and making kids stop, drop, and roll. Get on your feet, get on your feet, get on your feet, get on your feet. Stop, you're on fire. Drop. Roll. This prank ended with a wonderful twist, as Hater was actually fulfilling a student's request through the Make-A-Wish Foundation to prank the school. I'm a really big fan. He's one of my favorite celebrities, Jesse St. Clemens. He's from the Red Lobster commercials. On the fly, Hater decided to dash the hopes of Y students before running out and surprising the school himself. And a super cool girl <laughs> named <laughs> Words can't express my appreciation and gratitude and how grateful I am to Make-A-Wish and to Bill's team and the school and everything. Number six, Fake Drake. Yeah, how's that going, Captain Romance? This stuff really works. 
Man, she can't keep her hands off. Spare me the gory deeds. I beg you. A quick throwback to Drake's Degrassi days reminds us that he has at least some acting jobs. In this sketch for Jimmy Kimmel Live, he employs them as he goes undercover to interview random people on the street. The topic of conversation? Drake himself. While he does receive a lot of love, the rapper is also known to take a lot of heat. Do you feel any way about Drake crying at the ESPYs? Is that, like, not manly? Definitely not manly. I'd say he's, uh... A chicken head. Steering into the skid, Drake encourages his interviewees to diss him by cooking up outrageous fake stories about his SP's hosting and shenanigans at live performances. I'm Drake, so what would I would say to myself? What would you say to yourself? Huh? What would you say to yourself? What would I say to myself? Because I'm Drake, so I would say, what would I say to myself? I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Yes. I'm an idiot. I'm a total idiot. I am a total idiot. He's quick on his feet and smart with his own disses, proving just how multi-talented he really is. The final reveal is brilliant, leaving one street goer absolutely stunned. A bitch, I go to a bitch, I go to sleep with a suitcase. And, oh my god! <laughs> Number five, Ellen pranking all of her guests. I was, I just well, was on my way, you know. Put your pants on and get out of the car. I had to do this change in the car and this cop pulled me over. If Jimmy Kimmel is the late night king of pranking, then Ellen is the daytime queen. She leaves no one unscathed, targeting celebrities that come to her show, but also using her guests to prank the unsuspecting general public. Hey, some favorites include her tradition of sending her producer to a haunted house and scaring modern family's Eric Stone Street, despite his best efforts to stay safe. And these two girls got up in the middle of my Q&A and, and left. And I have a microphone. Oh, you... She has sent stars like Sofia Vergara and Dennis Quaid out to the public with hidden earpieces to repeat word for word what she tells them. Can I get some water? Anything Dennis Quaid Dennis wants water. Uh, can I get some water? Dennis Quaid wants water. Dennis Quaid wants water. She's even had David Beckham ask ridiculous requests of a massage therapist and hidden in Taylor Swift's dressing room to scare her. Famous or not, nobody is safe from the queen. <laughs> Number four, Adele as Adele. Nice to meet you, Chevy. <gasps> That's so good. <laughs> you look so that? not like yourself. Teaming up with host Graham Norton, Adele went undercover as an Adele impersonator. Sporting a fake chin and nose, altering her voice, and donning the moniker Jenny, Adele assumed the identity of a simple nanny who doubles as an Adele impersonator. Also, my day job is I'm a nanny. So <laughs> nannies talk very slow and very calm to try and make the world make sense. I guess you should go backstage and, and get ready for this. I'm gonna walk like this as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got a lad now. Hanging backstage with a bunch of fellow impersonators, Jenny makes fun of Adele for taking so long on her next album and complains about the lack of demand. Mine's been a bit slow recently, not that many. Oh, really? Yeah, not much of a demand. Jenny fits right in, and nobody suspects a thing. That is, until she steps up for her audition. I'm not feeling great. After faking a near-nervous breakdown, Adele breaks out her real, instantly recognizable voice, shattering illusions and stunning the impersonators. When the rain is blowing in your face. It's emotional and beautiful as she makes their dreams come true. As soon as you opened her mouth, you could just tell, you can't mimic like that. It was just beautiful. Beauty, beautiful. Number three, Paul Rudd on Conan. Who tops the list of the top 50 greatest vaginas? Well, I don't want to give anything uh. away. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had you. Rudd is one of America's most beloved funny men, mostly because of his goofy charisma. You are under arrest! No, I didn't steal anything! I was returning something I stole! It's that very quality that makes him such a talented prankster, as he always maintains a persona of innocent ignorance throughout his bits. No! No! I'm coming! No! Get you! I'm while he tormented Jason Segel throughout their I Love You Man tour, it's his running gag with Conan O'Brien that scores as Rudd's best prank. So let's take a look at this clip from the 40-year-old virgin. <laughs> Still ongoing, every time Rudd promotes a new movie on Conan's show, he has the host introduce a clip from the upcoming film. But rather than cutting to the expected clip, Rudd shows a scene from the 1988 E.T. ripoff, Mac and Me. And you right. promise me you're not going to show it again, and you show it again. Oh, get it out there. All right, all right. But I actually did have the act. You do have yes. one. Yes. Okay, let's take a look. Without fail, Rudd always plays it cool while Conan is caught once again. This is maybe the tenth time you've done this to us. 
This seems to be your favorite thing to do is to set up a clip from one of your movies and then we show that clip which is unforgettable, by the way. Number two, Arnold Schwarzenegger pranks wax museum goers. You have elbows and you have knees, so touch them. Very nice. The governor has pulled off a few pranks in his day, like when he pretended to be a gym trainer in the name of charity. When it burns, it grows. Remember that. Maybe you saw me on the FBI most wanted list. This time raising money for after school programs, Schwarzenegger went back to the makeup chair to suit up as his most famous character, Model T 800, the Terminator. Get out. Just joking. First, he enjoyed walking the streets of LA, spitting classic lines from the franchise at tourists, and even having a showdown with an Arnold impersonator. Who are you? I'm the Terminator. Who are you? I'm the Terminator. I'm the T-800. The real comedy gold comes at Madame Tussauds Wax Museum, where he pretends to be a wax statue before coming to life and terrifying unsuspecting museum goers. Because I am. He has a good time, and it's all for a good cause. No touching. Ah! Let me hold you. Ah! You want to come in and a shot? Oh my God. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number one, Sasha Baron Cohen pushes old lady off the stage. What's up with the vanilla face? Uh, me and my homie Azamat just parked our slab outside. Please. We're looking for somewhere to post up our black asses for the night. Borat proved that Sasha Baron Cohen fully commits to whatever ludicrous stunt he's pulling off. And this is no exception. For this prank, when he is awarded the Charlie Chaplin Award for Excellence in Comedy at the Britannia Awards, the presenter, a kindly old woman, gives Cohen the actual cane from Chaplin's film, City Lights. Cohen graciously accepts, but things go south when, in the middle of an impersonation of Chaplin's dancing, the cane snaps and Cohen pushes the presenter off the stage. Cohen tries to revive the woman as she's lying lifeless on the ground before he gives up and returns to his acceptance speech. Grace Cullington is the oldest... Um, Sorry, was the oldest surviving actor to work with Chaplin. The crowd goes from horrified murmurs to laughter when they realize that Cohen has pulled yet another of his signature tricks on them. On the bright side, what a great way to go. <laughs> Giving an award to me. Plus, she'll probably make the Oscars in memoriam segment. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the best celebrity prank? I'm never coming back. I mean, you just lost one of your, you know, one of your favorite guests. No. You just no. lost him. No. For more outrageous top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. The funny, uh, the interesting thing is actually, it's actually made by South Korea. No, 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 sorry. You've got Kim Jong.